Well, hello and welcome to today's Bible reading and devotional time. This is day 41 of our 90 days reading through John. That's the Gospel of John and the three letters. And don't forget to hit that subscribe bar and then the notification bell when it comes up so you can be notified whenever content is added to the channel. Comment on these videos, like these videos, share these videos. You know the drill. It's Friday. I, sh I need to find me some kind of applause and like confetti or something. It comes down to honor the fact that it's Friday. Anyway, we're in John chapter 10, starting in verse 1 uh, for today. If you want to be turning over there in your Bible or open up your Bible app, if uh, you're kind of tech savvy, I guess it's not really even tech savvy anymore because it's uh, just the way we, it, 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 not tech savvy, I guess tech uh, up to date normal uh, routine because so much of what we're doing now is on various apps. Okay, chapter 10. We're going to see some uh, analogies here that he does with doors and shepherds and that kind of thing. Uh, he says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in, climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who uh, ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out in and out and find pasture. So the, the sheep idea would have been something they would have got right away, because, or well, they should have gotten right away, let's put it that way. So in verse 6, Jesus uses this illustration uh, of the shepherd and the door and all, but verse 6 says they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Now, I remember in chapter 9, he's just finished uh, debating with the Pharisees and and the, about the man born blind, that uh, whether or not he was a sinner, uh, he was on the Sabbath, and this sort of thing. So now in chapter 10, they should have gotten this illustration pretty easily, that he's comparing himself to a shepherd because there were lots of shepherds out there, and they it was something they knew. It, shepherding was a common live, uh, livelihood in those days, occupation. Now, the other thing that could be causing some uh, confusion or lack of understanding is shepherds were down near the bottom of the social ladder. They were not allowed to give testimony in court. They were just distrusted. So they could be having some issues there. Okay, wait a minute. This guy's supposed to be the Messiah, but he's comparing himself to a shepherd. Huh? What? How does that work? Just a thought. Uh, the other thing, now I've not spent a lot of time around sheep. In fact, I've spent, you could probably measure it with an egg timer, the amount of time I've been around sheep. I have heard anecdotal stories of a preacher will be preaching on this text, and then here comes some local shepherd or someone they know who will walk in with the sheep, and he will call the sheep by name, or he'll talk to the sheep, and the sheep will follow him all around the auditorium. I don't know if those stories are true. I've never witnessed it. I've just heard, like I said, anecdotal stories, stories of my cousins, uh, neighbors, preachers, uh, third cousin twice removed, uh, preach this sermon and this is what happened. Okay, I've never actually seen it. But I do know two people who were shepherds in the southwest and dealt with sheep, and they did pretty well confirm sheep are not the brightest bulbs in the chandelier. Uh, they're not particularly intelligent. They do require a lot of help, a lot of maintenance. They are prone to wandering and getting into trouble, which really does sound like our relationship with God. We wander, and we are prone to getting into trouble. Now, going over here and having a look at uh, some PowerPoint here, looking at Jesus as the shepherd, the sheep need the shepherd, they need the protection. They are not particularly adept at fighting or defending themselves against 
uh, predatory animals. And so this is where the shepherd and his hirelings uh, come in. And the hirelings would be someone, obviously, who's hired to work and take care of the flock. But there could also be family, like if I'm the shepherd, I might have my kids working out there too because it's going to be the family business someone's going to inherit it when i get too old to do it but paralleling leaders with shepherds is something that uh, we see pretty frequently a uh, good shepherd is christ the sheep are the jewish believers you've got the sheepfold is judaism and the gate is jesus as the way other sheep the gatekeeper that common occupation they should have gotten in those days today obviously we have to do some explanation of it because we just don't have as many shepherds plus being city dwellers there are city dwellers who wouldn't understand a lot of the agriculture analogies and comparisons and that sort of thing so it sometimes has to be researched and explained now looking at verse one where he says uh, most assuredly i say to you he who does not uh, enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Well, that is something I, today we should be able to understand. Somebody, if I come to your house, I'm going to come to the front door and knock on the door, and you open it, you let me in. If I go around back and start coming through the window or through the back door or something like that, you're not going to, you're going to think something's not right. You're going to call the cops in some southern states. Uh, I might be find myself on the wrong end of a nine millimeter or something. But um, the idea is there is a proper way to enter the sheepfold. And just like there's a proper way to enter uh, salvation to be a Christian today, that is through Christ. A proper way to get to God, I guess, is the best way to put it. That is through Christ. If you're trying to do it any other way through your own works or through some other religious leader, then you are a thief or a robber. You're not trying to come in the right way. In fact, here is a picture of a sheepfold in the Middle East. And remember, he who enters by the door of the is the shepherd of the sheep. So this is the gate right here. I've got the arrow pointing at it. And there's the sheep in the fold. Notice it's got this wall. It's not a particularly high wall, but at least it keeps them from getting over it. And it does provide an obstacle and a barrier for a predator, maybe a coyote or a wolf. I don't know if they have coyotes over there or not. But a wolf or something like that might be able to jump it, but you're not going to make it easy on them at least. And so, verses 2 and 4, uh, he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So this is where down here is the same picture. Here's where the shepherd's going to come in. In fact, there's a staff right there I didn't notice before. Yeah, and so to him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. So you would keep some kind of a gate or a door and someone would be there watching it. And here comes the shepherd. All right, that's the boss. Open the door and let him in. Here comes the sheep. Let him in. When he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him. So he's leading from the front, which is really how Jesus did it too. He didn't sit at the back and tell everyone to go out. And do the work and he wouldn't he didn't sit in a nice air-conditioned house or limousine and give directives uh, he was right out there in the thick of it and as Christians we need to be out in 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 that thick of it now Jesus is the shepherd we're kind of the hirelings but you see this gate here we need to be bringing the sheep in and remember contrary to what the so-called progressive Christians uh, are telling you uh, the church is inclusive. We should be open to everybody, okay? But what they don't tell you, and this is the fatal error, is when you come in through that gate, uh, the sin stays out here. In other words, you have to repent of your sins and change. Uh, and that includes if you're in an unscriptural marriage, per Matthew 19, if you are in a same-sex relationship, all this other stuff. The Bible's very clear, and we don't go by the discipline or the catechism or any of that. What does the Bible say? That's what matters. And if your preacher, pastor, reverend, whatever, uh, does not accept biblical authority on this, then uh, he is not the good shepherd. Okay, He is a wolf in sheep's clothing. You need to get out of there and get away. Find a place where the Bible is respected as the Word of God. So that is going to wrap this up for today, and it's Friday, so we'll do our prayer topics uh, for the world like we usually do.
So uh, let's go to God in prayer. And we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for all the things that you've provided for us. Thank you, Lord, uh, for bringing us through another week. And we want to pray for the, the nations around the world and pray for world peace. Evil needs to be defeated, Lord, and help us to do that. And Lord, help us to root out the fake Christians who are leading people astray by denying your word, by denying the scriptures. We want to pray, too, for those nations that are closed to the gospel, that it can be opened up, that uh, the gospel can get in and souls can be won, and maybe even some of the most hard-hearted dictators can be won. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. We thank you for all that you provide. Forgive us, we ask of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. And so if you have your questions, leave them in the comment section below. Or you can send them to me, 2timothy4.2.3 at gmail.com. Be glad to pray with you if you have a prayer request, something that uh, is on your heart that you'd like for me to pray with you. I'd be glad to do it. And that is it for today. We will see you in the next video. And... I've actually got almost a full cup of coffee I got to go tend to. See you in the next video. Done. I'm out.